Hello, hello, and welcome to the Golden City Podcast, the brand new college podcast based out of Iowa City, Iowa, home of the Iowa Hawkeyes. There's always exciting stuff going on in this town, but we're a little more interested in the people who inhabit it, their experiences, knowledge, their likes, their dislikes, and opinions. Everybody here has a story to tell, and I would like to hear it. So thank you for listening and joining Skylar and I on this journey. Let's get to it. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Tonight, I'm beyond excited to have on Lucy Rodin. Lucy is heavily involved in all things sports broadcast media and has a resume that is far too long for me to cover in this intro. She was a pleasure to have on, and I think you'll really enjoy our conversation. We talked for quite a long time, so we're going to skip over our news segment and go right into the episode. So stay tuned. These are like people I like, oh my God, I love my whole life. Uh Uh-huh. And then the Iowa State fans started oh, to Oh, they see started it. to roll in, yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, I made sure I saved some of my favorite tweets because, like, they don't get to me. I, I think they're really funny for the most part. Um, Texas Cyclone, because I remember this tweet specifically, mm-hmm. tweeted at me and said, please don't forget to take your antibiotics for your chlamydia <laughs> next time you leave Iowa City. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so I go, I click on this dude's page in his bio, Proud Dad. And I was like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. You just got trolled by a dad? Who told me to take antibiotics for my chlamydia. I was like, are you for real? Wow, Uh, that's cold. This one guy tweeted at me. I screenshotted this tweet. He deleted it. I was really sad. He said, get this whole wheat bitch off my timeline. <laughs> I had no... Whole idea. wheat? Exactly. <laughs> what did he call Taylor? That now? is... A g- uh, that's, that's Taylor's new name. <laughs> I don't know what that meant, but I loved it. I was like, wow, like whole wheat bitch. Like, I wear this with, like pride. Um, and then a lot of like people who are just like, you're stupid. I hate you. Stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, man, like... You got me. Yeah, you really got me. Ouch. I'm the one over here with a video with a quarter million hits, so it was (laughs) screw off, buddy. (laughs) It's the the problem with mean tweets is that when you get someone tweeting mean things at you, like I get those tweets where people are like, You're the Tommy Laren of Iowa. Yep, wow. got three of those. You're the gun girl of Iowa. I was like, I don't think you watch my video. I really don't, but it's fine. You want to respond, not because like you're offended, but because you want to teach them a lesson. Yeah, you, you, you want to be like, hey, that's not what I'm like, that's not what I'm about. No, and it's like, you shouldn't be like, all those tweets I got, I don't think any of them would ever, ever have the balls if they saw me walking down the street right. come up to me and be like, you're the gun girl of Iowa. They probably saw a clip, like one little snippet of you and didn't like it and yeah. just thought that they would put their shitty opinion out there, you know? And you're just like, why? And so the problem is, is not responding. Because if you respond to like anybody on Twitter, I made the mistake of I responded to one guy. Uh-huh. He tweeted something something to me. It was stupid, like about how I should never make a video again until I learn how to like edit videos and get my hair cut and all this stuff. And I was like, Hey, sorry you didn't like my video. Back off, okay? I think I responded with something along the lines of like, I already embarrassed your school. Don't make me embarrass you again, Ooh. asshole, or something oh. like that. Uh, and it got like eight hundred likes on Twitter and his his tweet got it got a little bit of traction. And I went back to his Twitter like a couple days later and I saw that he had like responded something like with this like SoundCloud link or whatever. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh my God, these people are like tweeting at me so that people look at them and get attention. So that way they can get some, and I some was clout. Like, ah, he like, he got the best of me. I was like, dang it. Like I gave wow. him what he wanted. So I try not to respond to like. No, that's mean probably tweets. the best way to go about it. The, the ones I do respond to, if I get someone who tweets at me, that's something that's just like unreal like i cannot believe you did that Uh then i will like yeah i'm gonna like wreck you Uh because my my fans on twitter my followers are the best humans oh they'll probably jump all over it they this poor guy probably has never touched his phone since some dude some old guy tweeted at me a few always an old guy always an old guy (laughs) uh i did like this video asking people like to invite me to their tailgate so it was literally just a video of me being like hey invite me to your tailgates i might have saw this one is this recent uh yeah it was a month or so ago okay uh and he responded with take your top off and i was like (laughs) 
okay. <laughs> so I responded with like, are you for real, man? Like, like, anyone's actually going to do that. <laughs> like, are you like, what, what about this? Like, what about, hey, let me come to your tailgate. We're like, mm, I would love to see her without her shirt on. That's like, a I class A to. shit post. Yeah. Wow. So I like, I like ruined them. I was like, yeah, no, like you were the legitimate worst. Uh, wow. And the Iowa fans who went after him was just unreal. It made me feel so great. Um, I mean, I felt bad for this guy because people were not nice to him. So I try not to respond unless I absolutely have to. Like, if you're mm. going to tweet at me to take my top off, yeah, I'm, I'm going to rip you to shreds. And there I'm going to let go. everyone else rip you to shreds, too. But yeah, Twitter's a dark place. That's funny. Dark place, for dark sure. Place. Well, how did you originally get started in just broadcast media in general? Like, go back to freshman year. What were you doing at that time? Uh, so I'm like the luckiest person on this planet. I have known I've wanted to do this since fourth grade. Really? I have. I grew up loving sports. So grew up in North Carolina, um, but my dad was an Iowa grad. So Love I North was Carolina. all great state, the best mm-hmm. state. Uh, I was all Hawkeye growing up. I had no friends that liked Iowa. Like it was just me and and myself uh and i lived for for hawkeye football that was really? my life oh my god like i was convinced i was gonna marry ricky stanzi like i <laughs> sixth, sixth grade lucy like knew it was fate and like, really yeah still to this day if i see ricky stanzi i like get feels i'm like oh man that's my man <laughs> uh but so i've always known i wanted to do this so and i was terrible at playing sports i had like no athletic ability like played field hockey for a little bit and i was just crap like i sh- should never touch a field so i was like how can i still be involved uh-huh. uh so i started covering sports when i was in high school i started working for my local newspapers doing stuff for high school sports oh, that's cool and then like my high school s- newspaper went to like journalism camp and stuff like that uh-huh. uh knew i wanted to go to iowa so came here Started writing for the newspaper, like the Daily Iowan, and I hated it. I was like, man, this sucks. Like, I'm not the next great sports writer. Like, this is not for me. Quit. Talking about writing? Yeah, writing. So okay. I thought I was going to write for a while. Uh, came back and then started doing TV. And it was just, I mean, instantly. Well, like, light years knew, better. Knew that that was what I was going to do for the That's rest cool. of my life. And so I just have hit it really, really hard all four years and been covering Iowa sports since second semester of my freshman year. And it's been the i mean best experience of my life for sure very cool yeah i'm in finance myself but if i wasn't doing that i think i would be inclined to try for broadcast media you can talk especially as of recently i've thought about it like (laughs) damn have i been wasting my time in the business college but uh you're gonna make way more money than i ever will i gotta i gotta stick with it (laughs) well i don't know i have a little bit of a military contract to fulfill so they pay what they pay (laughs) It's government work. So. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. But anyway, yeah, I'm really excited that you're here, though. When I first reached out to you, I was a little worried that uh, you were going to be too busy for us because <laughs> I read your resume on your website and it was, uh, well, very impressive. Thank and I you. was. <laughs> and the the takeaway I got from that was holy shit she's involved in a lot of things. Yeah. So when you replied really quick and were like, "Yeah, I'd love to." I was like, <laughs> and then like wow. the first day it worked. I was like, "Hey, is Thursday work?" Yeah, sure. Yep. Okay. So very cool. Thank you for no, being here. No, I'm so happy to be here. I am busy, uh, but you got to yeah. learn to balance it. You got to find the way to to do what I like to do and and also be a college student. That's I mean, I think I read important. something that you record every day, right? Yes. So I have like recently I've kind of like taken a step back. So I used so I work for like DITV. It's like the student TV right. organization. I have some friends in it. Um and yeah, so it's live 5 days a week. And so I used to be in charge of that whole thing. So I was in charge of sports for like a year and a half. Um and then in the beginning of the year I was in charge of news and sports. So like pretty much everything. Everything. And I will be so honest with you, it was awful. Horrible. Really, a lot of work, I imagine. So much work. And so it's a student organization. They can't afford to pay me like right what they need to so i'm working seven days a week up to 14 hours a day making 20 dollars a day and you're taking classes too. i'm taking classes $20 too a day yeah because it's i mean they can't it's a student org they don't have the money to pay uh, me and i don't expect them to they probably do they just won't do it <laughs> bastards we'll see so and it's I worked in news. Mm-hmm. Um, I was an intern for KCRG, which is the TV station in Cedar Rapids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I worked as a news reporter for them for a while. Yep. Um, and I did that last semester. So I had news experience, but I don't like news. News is sad and depressing, and I'm just not interested that. in it. So 
it was doing a job that I didn't love to do that was unbelievably hard and not rewarding. So I was like, honestly, like it's time to like take a step back, focus on sports, focus on me and have been doing this whole thing where I'm like a college student now, Uh which is crazy. Yeah, I can definitely attest to the whole news is all doom and gloom thing. I mean, so Skylar and I, uh, we have this little segment that we put at the beginning of the episode where originally our intent was to talk about local Iowa City news, university stuff that's going on that we're interested in and we want to talk about um, just because it's relevant to, to our audience, right? But we've quickly found that a lot of Iowa City news is like local man, Rob's oh, it's all sad. <laughs> Rob's whatever store, like guy starts fire in the kitchen. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, never happened. It's hard to find stuff that's like fun to talk about. And um, yeah, so this is this is the part that I enjoy. It's for uh, sure. Yeah, so I'll give you guys a, I like to tell stories. Um, so I'll tell you my favorite news reporting story. Um, I crashed a funeral. Um, really? Yep. That was my, I had to do that for my internship. Uh, that sucked. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait, like you had to, yeah. or it just so happened that you crashed a funeral? So I worked for KCRG three days a week. And on the weekends, it's kind of like a free for all. Like it's not as organized during the weekday. Uh-huh. So the weekend anchor, um, his name is Forrest Saunders. He's down in Florida now. He emails me the night before and I get my assignment so that I know what time to come in, what I'm doing, all that stuff, because I don't want to come in crazy early and not do anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he emails me and he's like, we got this tip for a story about a funeral for a Korean War veteran. Um, he didn't have any friends or family. Uh, we This will be an awesome story for you. You need to go. And I was like, that is a good story. Yeah. Uh, so he emails me the details and it's a, like the email they got was super vague. It just said, this funeral, like, here's where it is. Here's what time. Sure. So, I show up and there's no funeral going on. So I'm like, oh God, like I just miss, I missed it. I'm late. Like I'm going to get in so much trouble. They don't have any content for the show. Go to like the head of the funeral. I don't know what the main building is called. And I'm like, hey, is there a funeral going on right now? I'm with KCRG. And she's like, no. And I was like, okay. And oh, she's boy. like, let me call real fast. And she calls. She goes, there's a funeral going on right now. <laughs> and, oh, the, and I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to miss it. So I roll up in my marked van so a giant car that has KCRG written all over it (laughs) park at this funeral get my camera out and I like walk and it's like a group of people and I should have known then it was the wrong funeral he had no friends or family and there were a lot of people there but I didn't think that through so I go up I'm like hi like my name's Lucy I'm so sorry for your loss we got a tip about your loved one I know he's a Korean War veteran we'd love to do a story just on on what's going on here today and and this lady she's like crying she just looks at me and she goes jeff was not a korean war veteran and i was like no no i was just sitting there i was like oh I oh, oh my god, god. i would have so had a sorry like i would have had the biggest pit in my stomach yeah. yep. oh i uh, felt like the worst person on the planet fuck so i was like oh <laughs> let me go call my like manager and see what the mix-up is i'm so sorry like i'm just gonna go to my car real quick i i'm so sorry so i get to my car and i call the station now i'm like the first person that picks up i'm like it's not a fucking funeral like that we're at the wrong place and he's like what and i was like i crashed a funeral i'm like i just ruined their funeral and he was like what and i was like like i need to talk to forrest so he doesn't pick up so i text him and i was like hey there wasn't a funeral today i went to the wrong one and he was like oops and so I, I'm just like sitting in the car and they're all watching me. And I was like, well, I can't go back. So we just start the car and we just drive off. I said, we're just going, go back to the station. And I'm like, are you serious? And that's what it was like as a news reporter. Wow. That is horrible. That's why I don't like <laughs> that this very horrible. much. That's quite a story. Yeah, it was, I feel so bad about it to this day still. Wow. Did, so you never ended up finding the Korean War vet? Nope. Oh, man. And I was like, I went. So I go back and like Forrest comes in like I just chilled there for a few hours. I was like, I don't know what you want me to do. I can't make any content out of this funeral I crashed. So my boss ends up showing up and he's like, well, and I tell him the story. And this man is dying. He's laughing so hard. He thinks it's the funniest <laughs> thing on the planet. And I was like, you're not the one who showed up at a random funeral today. Yeah. Shows me the email and there's no information. I was like, why did you think this was a real story? Like, Ugh. no information. Grasping at straws, I guess. And so, yeah, that was the time I crashed a funeral. That was life as a news reporter. So do you still have any connections with KCRG? I do. So I loved interning there. Like news wasn't my thing, but I learned so much there. About media. About media and like 
my mentor worked there. His name's Aaron Scheinblum, and he gave me some of the best advice I've ever gotten in my life. He's like, look, news is not what you want to do because he wants to do sports too. Mm -hmm. He says, but if you can go on TV for 10 minutes or even a minute and talk about city council, something you don't know about, imagine how much better you're going to be about talking at like football, something right. you do know about because now you have this experience. Yeah. Uh, and so I learned so much. And through my internship there, I worked for them this just, a, I guess, my last day was like two weeks ago. Uh, I was part of their Friday night light football coverage. So every Friday okay. I would go out to whatever high school game they assigned me to. Probably like Marion. And, uh, uh, most of mine were like smaller schools. So I spent a lot of time at Benton Community, uh, okay. Cedar Rapids Prairie, like all Eastern Iowa schools. I'm not um, from the area, but I'm familiar with a couple of Cedar Rapids high schools. Yeah, so. so I went to a Prairie Jefferson game. That was the only Cedar Rapids game I went to. Sounds familiar. A lot of small schools. I had to go to like an eight-man football game. Like, Really? Yeah, that was weird. That is weird. I am so, like, I didn't know that nine-man football existed until not that long ago. And I played varsity football <laughs> in high school. So. It's very Iowa. It's very really? Iowa. Well, I imagine because it's a small town thing. Did, Skyler, what, did you guys have a eleven man or nine man football team? Well, we, we had eleven. Okay. What cl what nine, class was your football team? Two, like two like two A. See, like I'm come from I come from the Twin Cities. We were six A, right? So we were like there is no seven A, right? Yeah, you're so big school. My graduating class had like five hundred and forty people. That was about the size of mine. Okay. Uh, but I had never, yeah, eight man football, small town. Like I grew up in a small town, but outside of a big area. So I commuted to a larger okay. school. Um, but I had never seen anything like eight man football before. It was actually sure. kind of cool to watch. It was really interesting and like it, these kids i know that they're just eight man like football but mm -hmm. they have to play every position so it's so insane just to watch them and you're like yeah oh he the kicker was the quarterback on the last play like i didn't realize that and it's just this whole like try to keep up type of aspect it's funny i've talked to a lot of my friends that grew up in iowa in small towns and they were and i asked them you know they played football i'm like what'd you play and i was like oh i played left guard and i played linebacker i'm like wait you played two positions and they were like yeah so I was like, dude, if you played both sides of the ball where I'm from, like, you're a stud. You're going, <laughs> you're going places. You know, the only guy that I can think of who consistently played both sides of the ball in at in my senior year was my friend Mike Delich, and he played middle linebacker and running back, and he went on to be, I think, so he was a running back at, for Minnesota okay. University of Minnesota in in their string. I don't know if he was fourth or third or whatever. And then he didn't really see himself playing much, and he wanted to. He thought that the University of Minnesota program was cool because he came in right when PJ Fleck showed up. I love and, PJ uh, Fleck. Yeah, I love him. And uh, so he came in. He thought that part was cool, but he was like, "I'm sure you know, football is a gigantic commitment, and to not play or yeah. have the, like not have the possibility of playing." So he decided to move on to Bethel College in St. Paul. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar. Very small uh, Christian private college. Um, but uh, yeah, so he was the only one that played both sides of the ball. I mean, where I come from, if you play varsity as a junior, you're good, right? No, I'm. So. my high school's the same way. Uh, so I went to West Forsyth High School in Clemens, North Carolina. Chris Paul went to my high school. So we're like... Really? Mm-hmm. So we... We take a lot of pride in that. So, fun fact, <laughs> Chris Paul made varsity football before he made varsity basketball. Wow. He didn't make That's varsity funny. till he was a junior for basketball, and he made it as a sophomore for football. Cool. So, he always would tell us, like, that he thought that he was going to be a football player. Yeah. Um, But my high school gets a lot of top recruits every year, so mm -hmm. I think it was two. What part of North Carolina are you from? So, it's... I'm from this little town called Advance. Uh -huh. It's spelled advance, but pronounced advance. Like that might give you like a little like <laughs> context to what it's like. I can just imagine the people from your town like having to clarify that with people. Advance. <laughs> and like if you say advance, like get out. Like we don't want you there. Uh, so I, but I live, live in Advance, which is in Davie County, mm -hmm. which is like, it is like red. When you think of redneck North Carolina, Davie County is redneck North yeah. Carolina. Yeah, so are you your western North so, Carolina yeah. then? So, yeah, so it's Winston-Salem area, which is like an hour and a half north of Charlotte, like 45 uh, okay. minutes east of the mountains. How close are you to Fort Bragg? Oh, not close. Okay. Not close. That's actually one of my top places I want to go get stationed at. Okay. So when I graduate, they'll send me somewhere. I really want to go to Fort Bragg. Okay. I think it's a cool spot. 
Um, the 82nd Airborne is there, and I think they're cool as hell. But <laughs> side note, sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. No, that's cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I grew up in, yeah, westernish North Carolina. Um, but K.J. Henry was, I think, when I was a senior, he was a top five commit. He committed to Clemson. Um, oh, wow. And so, and we have one or two major recruits every year. So I think, like, my brother's class has someone who's going to Georgia, I think, uh, Clemson. We had one guy who was, like, debating between Virginia Tech and North Carolina. He chose UNC. Don't know why. Um, but, yeah, so it's like a <laughs> – I wow. really hate Carolina. Yeah, hate wearing Carol- the Duke sweatshirt. Yeah, I got a Duke why. sweatshirt on. I <laughs> hate UNC. That's another story I'll give you guys. Um, but, yeah, so my high school is, like – like making the football teams a big deal. And really? I imagine it is yeah. North Carolina. It's where I'm from. Hockey is like King. Okay. So, I mean, football's still big. It's bigger. Football draws more crowd than hockey, but the ho- hockey in Minnesota is huge. Every single high school has a varsity team. That is crazy. Every single high school, which here it's like not, even. it's, I, I, I was not even that far from Minnesota and it's, like there's like local club teams here and there but i, I don't, don't know. even i have one friend in high school who played hockey and he had to drive two hours to raleigh oh, yeah. for practice so yeah so, yeah no hockey in north carolina a lot of people that are really passionate about hockey like parents that want their kids to play will actually move to minnesota that is crazy because there's competition everywhere so Traveling, so playing varsity hockey is no different than any other sport. Like as far as the distance you have to travel, you know, everybody's got a varsity hockey team. Whereas if you play in like California, Arizona, Texas, wherever, you will travel and it's expensive. So, but it's crazy. Minnesota's actually had high school hockey teams, like just some regular hockey team, like um, in the Twin Cities, some of the better teams will play uh an all quote, quote all star team from like California and just kick their ass. Good god. <laughs> it's like yes. it's like Texas football yeah, basically. No. I mean that's how we are with basketball. My high school basketball team sucks. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, but like that's how it is in like North Carolina with uh-huh. basketball. Everyone plays basketball and that's that's the sport. Mm-hmm. But yeah, hockey, that's a sport I wish I like knew more about or yeah. like could get into. Cuz like we have like the hurricanes but mm-hmm. n- like literally no one gives a fuck about I hurricanes. imagine yeah. like no one cares at all. Hockey's such a cool sport but it's a very niche sport. Oh for sure. It's very northern and I think that the reason hockey isn't as popular as it is is for two reasons. Number 1, m- people generally tend to be interested in sports that they maybe played or were exposed to as a kid, right? And most people are exposed to football, baseball, Mm -hmm. soccer, whatever, you know? So people grow up to be fans of those sports. Hockey only exists in certain states, right? And, you know, generally it's colder states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Mm -hmm. New England, New York, that sort of thing. But uh, also, hockey is a sport that if you want to be good at it and you want to play varsity, you want to play beyond, you have to start when you're two years old. Oh, yeah. I mean, my parents, my parents, my dad uh, was a legendary hockey player in a small town in Minnesota. So when I say legendary, I don't mean he was amazing. He was just amazing <laughs> for his community. <laughs> and uh, so, he, you know, I was destined to play hockey as a kid. And he sure shit got little skates on me when I was like two years old. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so people that play hockey or played hockey in high school, they never had the choice. They started when they were, you know, too young to make decisions for themselves. <laughs> so I think that that's one reason why hockey's not that popular. And then, two, it's an expensive sport. Oh, yes. It I- is costly. Um, just to practice costs money because they have, like, the ice doesn't stay frozen by itself. Like, it has to, <laughs> you know, there's... <laughs> There's stuff underneath the rink that keeps it frozen. So, and that costs money. So, and then the equipment. Oh my God. I have a pair of skates down here. Sometimes I like to go skating at the Coralville rink, just, you know, for fun. Those skates uh, retail at the time were $850. Good. Top of the line. I got them half off because I worked at a little hockey shop. Um, Of course you did. (laughs) I would never pay $800 for skates, (laughs) but yeah, I still own them. They're pretty cool. 
I yeah. like to brag about him. No, that is a sport. <laughs> like, you have to have so much money to be able to play hockey. Like, oh, yeah. That you're already like, if you're looking at hockey, just I have to take a lot of classes on stuff like this. Right. Uh, I'm like a sports studies double major. Right. If you're like playing hockey, you are already like eliminating like a huge chunk of the population right. from participating because it is just so expensive. There's no way you could afford like that. I mean, the sticks cost $250 a pop oh, if you want to buy the best sticks and they break. Like, you'll probably break two a season. Oh, I mean, that's no. just ridiculous. When you get to the high school level, in Minnesota, it's actually not that expensive because it doesn't cost any more than another high school sport. But when you're younger and you're on a traveling team or an association team, the fees are ridiculous. I mean, so... That is crazy. The cost to practice is very high. and uh, But, you know... There's Minnesota is a very passionate state about it, so parents are willing to throw down money on it. Uh, so for sure, yeah, that's the way it is with like North Carolina. Like, oh, my high school team was not very good, um, probably since Chris Paul was there. Uh, uh-huh. So and that was a long <laughs> time ago. Uh, so people will like AAU is so huge in my area. Yeah. Um, you guys know Harry Giles plays for the Kings now. He was a Duke guy. He was a top ten draft pick. Uh, he's from my area and okay. he didn't play in high school they'll most of these kids will go the aau circuit and they won't play for their high school team at yeah. all or they'll ship off to an academy mm-hmm. so he ended up leaving and going to oak hill i'm pretty sure so really? moving to virginia to go play at like a basketball powerhouse okay so it's like it's kind of one of those things where like high school basketball in north carolina like doesn't mean as much as it used to anymore mm-hmm. just because these kids are going to play for different different organizations or they're literally just going to boarding schools where they know they sure. can like get that that recruiting attention mm-hmm. basketball is actually pretty big in uh my area as well i mean i think you as a duke fan will appreciate i grew Matthew up you hurt no I, ah, he's, I, from, he's <laughs> from the area i was hoping that's what you were gonna say no someone better uh you as a duke fan i think will appreciate i grew up in the same hometown as tyus jones Trey Jones is the reason that Duke is going to be good this <laughs> Duke is going to make a run this year. I say it every year, and obviously we do. We're Duke. Trey Jones. I love Trey Jones. So I can't tell I you actually, how much I love Trey Jones. I don't know Trey Jones personally, but I have many mutual friends with Trey Jones. Um, yeah. She's like, so, can you hook me up? I love Trey Jones so <laughs> yep. much. So I can, Heart and soul over <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I don't know if you know Gary Trent as well. Okay, yes. I'm familiar with him, too. Um so, like, I grew up in a town called Apple Valley. Okay. And there's two high schools in Apple Valley. And my high school is relatively new, built in, like, 97. Okay. So, I went to a high school called Eastview. It's not private. It's still public. But Apple Valley High School is very old. And they're very well known for basketball and wrestling. And the Jones brothers, they went to Apple Valley High. Okay. And Gary Trent, who he's, if he's not in the NBA already, he should be soon. I think he is. His dad played for the Timberwolves. He's going to be next. So... Um, I was sad to see Tyus Jones leave the Timberwolves because we all loved him, obviously. But now that I think about it, though, Duke recruits heavy in your area. Because so Matthew Hurts a freshman on the team now, and he's from that. Do you know area. the town that he's from? By I chance, I do not. I know it's the Twin Cities area. Though. Uh, I'm not like I didn't grow up like very passionate about basketball, so I have friends that would probably know who you're talking about immediately, but I just don't. He's a scrawny but. white dude on Duke now. Uh, he's a great <laughs> shooter. Uh, but he's like one of the, like the phenom freshmen we have. Yeah. And then, yeah, the Jones brothers are from that area. So, yeah, Duke actually does recruit that pretty heavy. Uh-huh. That's kind of the way that like Carolina recruits Iowa really heavy. Duke recruits Minnesota really heavy. Yeah. I got to watch uh, Tyus Jones shit on my high school team, though. <laughs> and uh, Well, you know, actually, we had a really good team that year, too. We had a kid named Joey King. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah. that name. He was good. No Tyus Jones, but he was good, too. Um, so that was that was a huge. There was a lot of. That was the most people I've ever seen in a basketball game. Okay, uh, was when Tyus Jones was a senior. So Love and then Jones. yeah, and then he spent one year at Duke, won a championship, got on the cover of whatever what? Sports, Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated. Yeah, <laughs> I, I watched everything. that game. I know, <laughs> y'all. I don't mess around with Duke basketball. That's oh, my thing. Oh man, he is a celebrity in my hometown. Our mayor named a day after him. It's like <laughs> Tyus Jones Day. It was ridiculous. It is crazy. Yeah, I love the Jones brothers. I'm a huge fan of Minnesota now that I know like all my Duke players come from there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I just love it. It's yeah. a good spot. The inner Twin Cities produces a lot of basketball stars. And uh, Minnesota is not quite as well known as Iowa for wrestling. But my high, like that same high school, Apple Valley, 
is notorious across the country for wrestling. Really? There's a kid who was wrestling in um, under 18 Olympics, and now he is like the top wrestler at Penn State. His name is Mark Hall. Okay, I don't, I don't follow know. wrestling too much, but uh -huh. I know that if you're at Penn State, I don't want to mess with you. Right. Yeah, right. You know what you're yeah. doing. But this guy, Mark Hall, like I went to high, I went to middle school with him. When he was in eighth grade, I was in sixth grade. And this kid does not have an ounce of fat on his body. He looks like he could like tear you limb from <laughs> limb. Like, I don't know. I don't I don't fuck with wrestling. No, wrestlers scare me. Yeah, they do. That's <laughs> the one sport that I'm like, oh, I gotta keep my my distance. I went to wrestling like media availability where they just like set aside time for players to mm -hmm. talk to the media. One time, and it was my literal second story I ever went to, and one of the wrestlers al almost made me cry. So I was like, I'm never going back. Like, I was so <laughs> afraid. He, like, I, like, asked him a question just about, it was Thomas Gilman. Uh, so he graduated a couple years ago. That He was, like, a 125-pounder. The most horrifying, he's a little dude, but, like, there's no life behind his eyes. Like, horrifying. Yeah. And I remember, like, I asked him just some, like, super simple softball question about getting ready for, like, his next opponent. Sure. And he was like, I have no mercy for him. Like, <laughs> I want to rip him limb from limb. I have so many friends that are wrestlers. I cannot wait till they hear this. <laughs> I was just like sitting there like holding the mic, just like shaking. And he was like making oh. like really intense eye contact with me the whole time he was saying like this. His veins like, are just yeah. are just pulsating. <laughs> I was like, I'm never... And it was literally like just like a, a happy, cute little question. I was like, I'm never coming back here again. I am horrified. That's so funny. Horrified. Oh, answers. I went up to Dubuque with a friend of mine. So the, the guy that lives with Skylar and I used to... All three of us used to live together. His name is Taylor. We went. We mentioned him on like every podcast. It's like a tradition. <laughs> It is every podcast I've been counting. Yep. So he was a wrestler. He's got a lot of friends who wrestle for Loris College okay. in Dubuque. So we went up there to visit them just to hang out in Dubuque, go out, go to the bar and stuff. And uh, I remember walking into this bar and we met up with more friends of in this Dubuque wrestling crowd. Okay. And um, this girl, like, I, I approached this girl and she said, like, hey, are you on the wrestling team? And uh, I was like, no. And she goes, oh. <laughs> I was like, what? what are you talking about? I don't even go to school here. <laughs> you got to be a wrestler. If she you just gave me the, the dirtiest way. look like, oh, you ain't shit. Like, <laughs> you don't wrestle. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Which is so weird to me because where I come from, like the groupies, you know, that are like that are for the hockey players. <laughs> So I was so taken back by that. I was like, wow, I've never been snubbed so hard in my life. For not but, being a wrestler. Yes, Iowa loves its wrestling. And it's crazy how much Iowa loves its wrestling. It's very foreign to me. I like so, can't get into it. I had friends in high school that wrestled, but ugh, they were all the stereotypical, you know, aggressive wrestlers like you just described. Thomas Gilman, horrifying, so. literally horrifying i think it's crazy like so i always got spencer lee like do you guys know who he is mm -hmm. uh so he's national champion both years he's a sophomore the kid's like five two like you'd see him walking down the street and have no idea that he's like the baddest motherfucker you'll ever yeah. see in your entire life that's what i think so crazy about wrestling is he's like a short little dude and like straight up will like pin you in 16 seconds like he's really? unreal so good and like uh wrestling just it's the one sport that I'm like, I don't, it's just weird to me. Like, it's cool, and I think it's awesome, and it's, like, just crazy strength and athleticism and stuff, but I just, like, don't get it. Mm -hmm. I just don't get it. Yeah, me neither. It's not my thing. I'm not into, like, grabbing other dudes very closely. Like, where <laughs> really? I come not? from, where I come from, I wear, like, thick, heavy pads with, you know, a jersey, and uh, I don't ever have to touch any other sweaty guys. <laughs> so, not my thing. But anyway, so you are still involved in DITV, mm -hmm. right? And are you are you still in charge of the whole show? Or? Oh God, no! God bless, I'm not. Um, so yeah, I stopped. I stepped down from that role probably about a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so after my Iowa State video like took off, so my account grew a lot and. I started realizing, like, I have this platform now. I can do a lot more with it. Yeah. And the stuff I do, like, I, I tell jokes about sports. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do that under 
like someone's platform, like someone's right. umbrella. Yeah. So the stuff I do on my Twitter is independent of anything I do. Okay. For Not like affiliated with the university. Yeah, no. That's your so, show, right? Uh, Big, Big Ten, Ten Blitz. Blitz. Yeah. yeah, I've seen it. So I do that for me. So I use university equipment for that stuff. I write all of that myself. I edit it all myself. It's all just mm-hmm. Lucy brand just because I can say what I want and do what I want. Totally agree. If it's under my name and or my I can brand. Totally relate yeah. to that. Yeah. So like I'm not I don't have anyone like looking over my shoulder. I don't need to get my scripts approved. For sure. Um and I like that. I like having that freedom. So the stuff I do for the DI now is I'll just cover football and basketball games for them, mm-hmm. which I love doing so much and I'll go to like media availability and stuff like that. But really my main focus now is my own sports comedy brand type of right. deal. So, like, the stuff I do for my Twitter is usually the stuff I'm working on all the time. Okay. Which That's the main focus so right now. And that's, is that what you want to focus on in the future? Like, in the near future? That's what I'm hoping to do. Um, so, like, I don't, are you guys familiar with Katie Nolan? So, she works for ESPN. She has, so. like, a late night show for ESPN. And so, mm-hmm. she's, like, really the first sports comedy, like, pioneer Sure. Journalists. And so that's kind of what I want to do. Like the stuff I, I love going to games. I love doing the serious stories I do. But yeah. I have so much fun going to tailgates with Iowa fans and interacting with them on Twitter and writing stupid jokes for mm-hmm. a show that make people laugh. Like that's what I want to do. I want to do the daily show, but for sports. Sure. That's like kind of my goal. So I try to focus on that because I want to look at an employer or uh-huh. a network or anything and be able to like say, here's all the funny stuff I've done that no one else has done. It's just Lucy doing I this. I feel like this is a perfect time for you to be getting into that, too. Oh, the sports so comedy world, I feel like, is kind of uh, growing it right is. now. But it's not where... I feel like it's going to keep growing. So. It definitely is. Like, Barstool has really opened that up, right. for sure. It's like, Deadspin was, like, doing it before, but not to, like, the level uh-huh. Barstool was and not... To like the interactivity level. That it was kind of sad. I feel like Bleacher Report was doing sports comedy at they've, first. They've and they've stri- really yeah. gone. They're trying to replace ESPN now That's as the gonna serious. No, it's not gonna and I, not I remember happen. I used to follow Bleacher Report. And I thought uh, the stuff that they put out was really funny. And now they're just like. They're just a serious. News they're just a regular. Yeah. Which and is like, kind of a shame. Boring, like I think so, too. People want personality. That's right. what that's where sports is going, because Sports is so, Twitter's here, you can go to a game, all this stuff, people are paying for, like, YouTube TV, like, you're not, sports journalism is not where it was anymore, so to be, like, a sports journalist, you have to do something different, you have to stand out, Mm -hmm. because anyone can be a sports journalist now, you can go to a game and film something on your phone and tweet it and be a sports journalist, like, that's the way it is, so... I want to have something that's a little different. So, a little like, more personality unique. is the way to do that. Yeah. And that's why if you, like, look at the ESPN anchors, the reporters that do really well for themselves, it's the people who have personality and aren't just, like, here's what's going on that are, like, Stephen A. Smith, is he mo- the most ridiculous human on the planet? Absolutely. He is funny at times, though. <laughs> but, like, he has a personality. <laughs> he sure does. And that's why people tune in to see him. Same uh-huh. thing with Colin Cowherd. He has a personality. Yeah. And he, a lot of people don't like Skip Bayless, but he's still always sort of in the public uh-huh. eye because he's got, like you said, a personality. He doesn't care so. if you like him or not. You're talking about him, mm-hmm. and that's good for Fox. That's good for him. Absolutely. So, like, that's... Like, with me, that's what I try to do. I hope that, like, when people watch my stuff, people see my Twitter, that they're like, that's who that girl is in real life, which I Mm -hmm. hope it is. And, like, that's where sports is heading. It's like, it's just not enough to, like, report the sports. You have to be someone. You have to have a take. You have to have something that makes you different. For sure. So that's what I want to do. I want to tell jokes about sports. Well, I think that's very interesting. That really, when I was looking at your website and... uh and I looked about the, you know, about me and all that stuff. Like, I, like one thing that stood out to me is you said I like to tell stories. Mm-hmm. I and love to tell stories. Amongst all your accomplishments, which there are many, you said I like to tell stories, and I was like, holy shit, that's one of the big motivations for me to have this podcast is to talk to people and get their stories out of them. <laughs> so that's, I was like, hell yeah, I that's love. Awesome. That's what journalism is: is it's uh-huh. storytelling. Like exactly, and that's what people forget. It, it's storytelling. If I can tell you a story, if I can make you laugh, even if it's with a stupid Urban Meyer joke, that's a story. Uh-huh. Well, love stories are so stuff. much more memorable. If you can spin something into a story, it, so. It's so, it sticks so much more. So I can definitely, uh, I, I 
vibe with that. I don't know. I don't have a better word for it, but <laughs> journalism could be for you, my man. I mean, storytelling, that's Maybe. the whole thing. I don't know. I'm like you. I, I'm not like I, I've dabbled with writing before. It's it's not my thing. Um, it's but. like I I am a really good writer. I'm not going to lie. Like I, <laughs> I, I really I, hey, I don't want right. to lie to you guys. I, really I can it. crank I out really a paper it. in an hour and it's going to be a 95. Shit, the, you want to write issue. my papers for me? Do you? <laughs> my sister actually, <laughs> my sister would pay me to do that. I'm not kidding you. I wrote my sister's college application essay. That's awesome. Uh, she didn't get in, but it was her fault. So like, not my favorite. <laughs> uh, but like writing, what I've learned is like writing for TV is so different that it's like a type of writing that you have to like learn how to do uh-huh. because it's very hard to write the way you talk. Yep. And that's how you have to write for TV because if you write like you write a paper, if I go up there and I'm like, and nevertheless, like that sounds weird as shit. So you have to learn how to write in like broken sentences and like incorrect grammar and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And that's a type of writing that's like really tough. But sure. that's the type of TV writing if you're wanting to dabble in oh, television. Man. Maybe. I don't know. I kind of got to see this finance thing through. <laughs> I'm a little late to be switching majors, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I just didn't grow up around it. You know, hockey players generally suck at basketball <laughs> and we stay off the court at all costs. So see like basketball, like growing up in North Carolina. So I'm actually going to tell you the story of why I'm a Duke fan right now. Yeah, This is probably one of my best stories. So hope mm-hmm. you guys are ready. So I don't know if you guys are familiar, if you cut, co- like followed Iowa sports before you got to school here. Um, but Iowa basketball was historically shit. Really? Like, so they had Tom Davis, Dr. Tom, who was the head coach for a while. And he was, Iowa was really good. They had, I mean, BJ Armstrong was on the team, Chris Street. They this were, is what year? Oh, these are ba- back in the 90s. Okay. And uh, I wasn't alive then, but my dad was very much learn your history. Sure. Uh, and Iowa basketball was really good uh, after Tom left. Um, Steve Alford came in, who is a piece of shit person. Um, and he ended up leaving after just being the legit worst human on the planet. Um, and then it was uh, Todd Licklider. And he came in and ran the Iowa basketball program into the ground. And wow. that was about the time that I was starting to get really into sports. So I was in like middle school then. Uh-huh. Um, elementary school, middle school. And Iowa was so bad that I could not get their games televised in North Carolina. They used to. It used to be a bet every year is what team would win more, the Iowa football team or the Iowa basketball team. Because uh, <laughs> Iowa oh, basketball wouldn't be able to win like nine games a season. Uh, they were so bad. So I grew up in North Carolina, and I wanted to watch basketball. I needed a team, and I couldn't follow Iowa because they weren't televised, and they were so terrible. So I really liked UNC. Mm-hmm. Um, that's changed. God bless. That's changed. <laughs> um, it started because like one of my classes had like a class project and I was like Carolina for the class project. So I had all this Carolina gear and stuff. And I was like, I like the colors. Like, why not? So I cheered for UNC and I actually really, really liked UNC. And then my freshman year of high school, Fran McCaffrey got hired as the head coach. And he's really done wonders with this program. Turn it uh-huh. around. Uh, and my junior year of high school, I'm following Iowa basketball at this point. I still like Carolina. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm like, finally, I get to like cheer for my team. And Iowa is announced that they're playing at UNC for the Big Ten ACC Challenge. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, this will be fun. And so I go to the game. It's like an hour and a half drive from where I'm from. So it was my dad, his girlfriend, my little brother, and I. And so obviously, I'm wearing Iowa stuff. Uh, and so I was 16 at the time, but could have passed for 12. That's important for the story. <laughs> um, so it's like me and my brother. My brother's 12, but could have passed for eight. So we get to this, we get to the Dean Dome and I'd been to Carolina games before. And so we're wearing all Iowa stuff. And this game was probably the worst basketball game I have ever seen in my entire life. Like it was just like both teams played like straight shit. Really? But Iowa played better than Carolina did. They didn't play well, but they played better than Carolina did. UNC was number 12 at the time. Iowa was unranked. That was like the first time that Carolina had lost an unranked game at home and like an unbelievable amount of times. Yeah. So it's like me and my little brother and my dad and his girlfriend and they're sitting there cheering. So like me and my brother had kind of like separated from them because like my dad's girlfriend is like really weird about sporting events. She like wore Iowa stuff, like zipped up her jacket, started cheering for Carolina. And we were like, yeah, fuck that shit. Like we're leaving. <laughs> so we're sitting there and we're cheering and this old guy turns around um, and he looks at me and he goes, you're the reason Carolina lost. What? And I was like, <laughs> no, sir. Like I'm not like... It was really just, not like it was just a bad game. Like we just 
played better. Like, we out-rebounded you, whatever. Sir, I'm just a 16-year-old girl. I was like, I'm a child. (laughs) And these other Iowa fans had, through the course of the game, found their way to us. They were like, we want to sit with you guys. And it turns out one of the ladies was that was sitting with us was a professor of law at Wake Forest, which is in Winston-Salem, so like 20 minutes from where I'm from. Okay. And her dad was like an Iowa alum, so they were at the game. Uh, and he was like, no, you're the reason Carolina lost. He goes, who do you think you are coming here in the Dean Dome cheering and yelling like that? And yeah, he's you horrible person. <laughs> he's, he's like 75 years old. He's got his like 40 year old plastic surgery up trophy wife with him. Oh, and she's boy. just looking at him like, please stop. And I was like, sir, it's a basketball game. Like, what do you want from me? And he was like, I can't believe you would come in here and do that. And this man shoved me. He put his hands on me and pushed me back into my seat. Wow. And it was like one of those moments in life where you're just like, it's happening. And you're like, how did we get here? Like, what is going <laughs> I've had a on? Few of those. <laughs> and so my dad and his girlfriend are just watching this happen, like not doing anything. My brother is like, what's going on? And the like Iowa fans next to me are screaming at this dude. And they're like, you just assaulted a minor. Like this lady's like, you just like pushed a 12 year old girl well, i was 16 shit. if whatever. i saw my daughter get shoved at a sporting event there'd be hands thrown that's yeah. like my dad always says he's like i didn't see it and i was like yeah bullshit we all know you did <laughs> but whatever and so security ended up having to come and get this man and take him out and so we had to leave and carolina fans were booing us and like And it wasn't even like it wasn't a sold out game. It was like a Monday night. And it was like me and my little brother getting taunted by this entire fan base. And I left the Dean Dome that day and I was like, fuck this school. I hate Carolina. And then the next like I'm going to class like the next day and there's all these UNC fans. They're all talking shit like, oh, you cheated, whatever. I was like, it was in Chapel Hill. What is wrong with you? (laughs) And I hated Carolina. And so my hatred from Carolina like. I wanted them to lose all the time. And then I realized, like, the only thing that Carolina fans hate more than losing is Duke winning. (laughs) And so I cheered for Duke (laughs) every single time they played. Every single time. And so I got really into Duke. And then when I moved here for school, like, I grew up such a nerdy, weird Iowa fan Uh that I couldn't be that nerdy, weird Iowa fan anymore. If these athletes were in my classes, if I was working with them every day, if this was, like, Not like I wasn't alone in this like Iowa Mm. fandom anymore. So I needed to find a team that I loved. Like you have to be a fan. And so I got really, really into Duke basketball. And ever since I've loved them. That's awesome. And that's why I love Duke. That's quite the story. I told you guys. I I told you. Wow. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I suppose that's better than some people's stories as to why they root for teams that they have nothing to do with. Yeah. No, it's always just like they win. At Taylor Humphrey. Yeah, Taylor, our Weird roommate house. that we mentioned, he roots Patriots, for New England yeah. Patriots oh, God. and um, the nope. New York Yankees. Why? Um, he doesn't have an answer. Why? Oh, because he liked him as a kid. I don't know. That's his answer. See, Thanks. as nope. painful as it is, I love Minnesota sports. Okay. And so I don't care what happens. Like I'll stay loyal because I don't know. Rooting for them feels genuine. Okay. So even like. Like I grew up a min- my parents went to Minnesota, so I grew up a Oof. Gopher fan. So uh, you know, I was kind of like indifferent about the outcome of the game. Okay. I was, uh, I would have been happy with either. It was cool to see the Gophers as good as they are. They have never been this good in their history. Man, so. PJ is just doing wonders with that program. I, I knew he, he was going to. He's I very he eccentric, but I think he's. Uh, He's been good for them. You have to respect it because, like, he's like, I like PJ Flex so much because one, he can coach. He can coach. He mm-hmm. knows what he's doing. But he's very just unapologetically unapod- himself. Yeah. And he's he's ridiculous and he doesn't give a shit. But his players buy into that. Yeah. Like he is very passionate about what he does. He brought some much needed energy. It oh, seems yeah. like. I mean, a lot of people think the row the boat thing is kind of. I don't know, lame or whatever, but I mean, it it seems to work for them. So they really get into it. I have a ton of friends that go to the U of M and they all got like row the boat gear and I don't know. They love it. When I went and covered Iowa's game at at TCF last year, uh, I remember like we would, to get to the media room, you had to like walk like in the tunnels, like under the stadium and the, the walls were just covered in oars. Really? I'll show you pictures. Like, covered in ores it was the whole thing like they have fully 
uh-huh. like bought into that. And I think that's so good for Minnesota as a mm-hmm. school, like to put all that money and all that faith into PJ Fleck and not half ass exactly. that. Oh, it's done wonders for their program. Yeah. It's so good for the Big Ten, too. I hope their football team keeps doing well because Minnesota has not traditionally been good at a lot of big sports. Hockey has been their their big thing. And their hockey team has historically been one of the best in the country. They have won lots of national championships. College hockey is not that big. Yeah. So, and now hockey was the one thing. Mariucci Arena is awesome, right? That's that's their rink that they play at. But the problem is, is they have changed into the Big Ten. So they used to play in a league called the WCHA. Okay. Now they play in the Big Ten. So all of their rival schools, like Duluth, uh, North Dakota, St. Cloud, Mankato, Bemidji, all these like rival local schools, right? They don't play them anymore. And those were the big games. And uh, so now the only real big team that they play is Wisconsin, and their hockey team's been weak for the last, you know, decade. So, like, they legit can't fill half their stadium anymore. Really? And it's like... Minnesota Gophers, like that's what they're known for is hockey, and they, it sucks now. They none of, none of my friends go to the games. That's sad. It's very sad. You know, my dad, like he is a Gopher hockey fan till death, and that's actually how him and my mom met and ended up dating because she asked he he had season tickets and went all the time, and she was like, well, when they met, he was like, will you take me to a game? And he was like, mm, I suppose. <laughs> He's like, I kind of had plans to go with my friend, but I suppose I'll take you. <laughs> but yeah, so that's been sad. But it's good to see their football team do well. Uh, I think it's so good for the Big Ten. So, so good for the conference. I told my dad for the Hawkeye Gopher game, I was going to wear uh, Gopher underwear for the game. So. <laughs> um, Hurts me a little, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You're going to do it. I don't know what I'd do if Duke played Iowa, so I can't say anything. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, so let's see. You are, I saw on your website that you did some work in California. I did. Um, I lived in California this summer. Um, I interned with Spectrum Sports Network, which is a sports network owned by the Lakers and Dodgers. Okay. So it's got two channels to it. So Spectrum Sports Sportsnet is Lakers, Galaxy, and Sparks. So the Galaxy is their MLS team, Sparks their WNBA team, but it's mainly Lakers coverage. And then SNLA, which is a network entirely devoted to the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. So I interned for them this summer. So I lived out in California for three months, um, and it was like the legitimate coolest thing I have ever done my entire life. Sounds like fun. LA is unreal. The Dodgers are such a great organization to work for, like... LeBron James is technically my coworker. Like we're on the, like, the like the pay difference is very very big, but like we are technically coworkers. Which you are part if, of the same organization. That is if true. I ever meet him, that's the icebreaker I'm going to use. Like, like, what's up? <laughs> like, we work together. Uh, so cool. It was just an unreal experience. I learned so much. Uh, and Spectrum was. One, just a great company to intern for because Spectrum's actually the TV company. So, like, Spectrum Internet, like, Charter. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. We, yeah. My my, ca- my family's cable provider is Charter, and they changed to Spectrum. Yeah. So, that's... So I'm familiar. That's Spectrum. So, they have, like, the regional sports network out there that just, like, broadcast that stuff. They were such a good company to intern with because... They taught me so much and they made sure I was learning what I needed to learn. But mm-hmm. my schedule was very generous. I worked three days a week, which meant that I had four days to live in Los Angeles. And I had been to LA before, but like I've been living in Iowa the past three years. Right. So it was a little bit of a change. Such an adjustment. So cool though. I mean, like it, I would wake up and I would decide, like, all right, do I want to go to the beach or do I want to go to the mountains today? Or, like, <laughs> am I going to go to the Grammy wow. Museum? Or, like, what's the plan? <laughs> so cool. Oh, I want to go back all the time. I've That's I've sweet. been to California. I have not been to Los Angeles. I've only been to San Francisco and okay. the Bay Area, which I, is, is beautiful there. So I'd love to see Southern California. But uh, it is – I am, like, obsessed with L.A. I think it's, like, the coolest city Like, all the stereotypes about it are totally true. Like, (laughs) totally true. 
everyone is beautiful. Everyone is into fitness. Like, oh, it's actually that part is true. Yeah, everyone's I wasn't so sure, healthy. but yeah, I when we went out to so uh, originally Skyler and Taylor, who we mentioned, they lived with a guy named Dylan. Dylan's a good friend of ours, and he is from San Francisco. That's why I was out okay. there. I went to go visit him. And uh, so when we, we went out to go visit him over spring break because he moved uh, out of Iowa and back home, right? And that's when that's how I came into living with them, right? So we went to go visit him in California, and we thought it'd be fun to hop on Tinder, see what's <laughs> popping. And it is true. The California girls are very good looking. So <laughs> let's just... All right, I, I thought it was a stereotype. Holy shit! Yeah, I, maybe Katie it's because there's a lot of right, co- huh? maybe it's because there's a lot of colleges in the area. I don't know. There's yeah, they're beautiful out there. Mm-hmm. The so when I went out there, there were a couple Iowa alums in the area, mm-hmm. um, which is how I got to go to the SVs. I'll tell you that story next. I'd um, love to hear that story. I sat front row at the SVs actually. Oh, um, wow. So we'll get to that one next. I'll have you pull something up on the computer. Um, uh, but so I met up with an Iowa alum out there who works for Fox Sports. And so he like took me out to like lunch and he was just talking to me about L.A. And he goes, here's my theory. Every small town in America, they get their three most beautiful people and they send one of them to L.A. <laughs> and, and like, it's so true. Everywhere you go, it's just ridiculously beautiful humans because they all want to be actors or like right. singers and stuff like yeah. that. And it's like you get out there and you're like, man, I'm a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> wow. But it's really nice. I need to it's, step my game up. It's very refreshing to like go out there because like I like have people like recognize me in Iowa now and stuff uh-huh. like that. When I go out in LA, no one cares about me. Mm-hmm. They're like, you are literally worthless. And I'm like, thank you. Like, I really appreciate <laughs> that. It's humbling. But so. When I went, so his name is Ian, and he worked at DITV, and he found me through there. Mm-hmm. We He took me to tour Fox Studios, which I actually lived only just like five minutes from, and we ran into this guy named Isaiah Scales. And so Isaiah Scales is like, without a doubt, the best person on the planet. So he lives in L.A., works for Disney now, and works for like their post-production and stuff like that. And he is just unreal, like the nicest dude ever. Flies back to Iowa, meets with students all the time, will do anything he can to help you. So I ran into him at Fox Studios, like gave me a hug, and he was like, hey, I have an extra ticket to the ESPYs. Like, do you want to come? And I was like, hmm, like, let me see. Like, yes, I do. Let me think about that, yes. So (laughs) he, it was a seat filler ticket. So for all these giant award shows, you'll notice that when someone wins an award, they'll go up onto the stage and then they go to commercial break. But before they go to the commercial break, they pan out to the crowd and there's never an empty seat. Mm -hmm. But someone just got up from their seat and went up onto the stage. So they have seat fillers. So they're people who they, whatever, just any person who like signs up for it, you come in, you dress up like you're supposed to be at the award show and you fill seats. That is so extra. (laughs) It is ridiculous. So I... Didn't have to pay to go to the ESPYs. I went to the ESPYs for free. And I said, all right, like, I'm going to look unreal. Like, I want to look like an athlete girlfriend. Because if I look like an athlete girlfriend, (laughs) they're going to put me in the better seat. So I started off in, like, the fourth row. And so you'll move throughout the show. Because, like, people will get up. They'll accept awards. People will just leave. Yeah. I started off sitting by the Texas A&M football team. So I was sitting next to Jimbo Fisher. And I was like, hmm, this is weird. And then they're like, oh, who wants to move? And I was like, I want to move. So I moved and I was sitting right behind Dwight Howard. I couldn't see fucking oh anything. He was so tall. <laughs> so it was like uh, it was like Bill Walton, Dwight Howard, um, and then Jim Calhoun was sitting right behind me. And I was just like, hmm, this is weird. And then they were like, it was a commercial break and they saw you have to wear like a wristband. That's how they'll tell you you're a seat filler. Mm-hmm. So they saw my wristband. They're like, get up, come here. And I was like, okay, you just listen to what you say. And they go, all right, we'll put you right here. And I like sit down. And it's the, like, they're like, okay, go up there. And I was like, you mean right there, right there? And they're like, yeah. And it was the front row. I look to my left. It's Rob Gronkowski sitting right next to me. Oh, my God. That's so cool. I, like, look at him, and he gives me, like, a gronk smile. I was like. (laughs) Taylor (laughs) is flipping out right now. (laughs) Oh, I can't wait to hear this. is absolutely flipping out right now. Yeah, Yeah. so I got to sit next to Rob Gronkowski, and he, like, could tell I was, like, not supposed to be there. And so, like, he, like, smiled at me, and I was like, oh, my God. And then I, like, turn around, and I was like, oh, my God. I was like, that's Giannis. I'm sitting directly in front of Giannis. I have a better seat <laughs> than Giannis. <laughs> and so I'm just like trying to keep my cool. And so Jared Goff, I took his seat when he left. Um, and so wow. I'm just like sitting there and I'm like, okay. Like I like look over like three seats down. is like Russell Wilson. And I'm like, all right, lose like 
come on, like, don't. Just casually, oh, there's and you're Russell. Like, not allowed to have your phone out. Like, that was the rule. They're like, if you, we catch a seat filler taking a picture with someone, you have to leave. At this point, I was like, fuck it, I'm front row. So, like, Giannis, someone, like, brought, like, their phone to, like, take a Snapchat with him. So I took a Snapchat of Giannis taking a Snapchat. And then the next, like, intermission, somebody won an award. Kobe Bryant was presenting. So I was like, oh, my God, like, I can literally touch Kobe Bryant right now. And Giannis sat down too fast and ended up hitting his head on my head. And I just, like, turned around and looked at him. And it was this, like, it was agreement. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> it was this, like, agreement of, like, wow, like, you just hit your head on mine. Like, <laughs> whoa. And then Giannis won Male Athlete of the Year. Um, and so you, like... I didn't tell a whole lot of people I was going to the ESPYs because I was like, I don't want to be that person that's like, I'm going to the ESPYs. Oh, I would. Uh, I did afterwards. <laughs> afterwards, I was like, like I didn't realize how good my seats were going to be. Um, he won the award, so it's so funny because if you like pull up the like video of Giannis winning the award, he stands up and then I do too. And I'm like, what's up? Like, I said, <laughs> Time to find this. Oh, yeah. So if you go to YouTube and you just like search up like, uh, like Giannis SB best male athlete or whatever you'll see me sitting in front of him yeah and then like the women's national team was there and they were like the next presenters to come up and it was like the most like just unreal experience of my life like uh, yeah that is i, I can't even imagine i didn't realize like w like how cool it was gonna be or how weird it was until like i was sitting there so you had to get there really early so we're just like sitting waiting for people to start to like fill in and like I like look to my left and it's if you guys the second one right there. Yeah. So if you like scroll through the beginning, you'll see once he wins the award, you'll see me, which is literally unreal. Um, this is so cool. Caitlin, wow. Th this is quite the show. Yeah. So if you. What yeah, year was this? This was literally uh, this was this year. So this was just a few months ago. OK. Um, because it was in the Staples Theater Theater, which is all right. And. There I am! Holy oh, shit! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, I that is too cool. The SBs. Hold up, go back. <laughs> that is insane. Oh, and so again. I didn't tell. Yep. Oh my gosh! Oh, you weren't kidding. You really mm -hmm. did go all out. Yeah. So you, you see, look great. like, thank you. So you see, like Lindsey Vaughn, Russell Wilson, all. This is the most right ridiculous there. thing I've ever seen right now. It was so oh. cool because <laughs> I didn't. I didn't tell people I was going, and then I like pull out my phone after Giannis won, and it's just like, um, was that you? Like at the ESPYS, that girl looked just like you. Like, is that, that in is... LA? And I was like, Wow, yeah. that is too cool. And you look like you belong there too. Yeah, I knew that if I dressed like a lot of. people, the seat fillers showed up in like these like cheap like just casual casual clothes. dresses and i was like uh, like i get it like i had to spend a crap ton of money for that dress oh that's so worth but it but it was so worth it because i knew if i looked really good i was gonna get a good seat and i got a great seat like yeah i sat front row at the espies Giannis hit his head on mine like <laughs> So every time I see him play, I'm like, hmm. It all worked like, out. I wonder if your head hurts. Ah, uh, he's a that cool awesome. he's a cool dude too. I like I like him as a as a person. I he guess. was really nice. Like talk to him for a little, like nice guy, uh -huh. super cool. But yeah, that was when I went to the SVs. And that was all because of an Iowa alum who was just like, Love the Hawks, like let's go. So cool. So yeah, networking cool. is pretty powerful. That's, yeah. One of the most no, insane things I've ever heard. I'm not that's my lie. networking story. It's like, yeah, I sat front row at the SVs because Did you know like, the guy next to you then? Uh you the just... guy next to me was a seat filler too. Okay. Um, so it would it changed like just depending on the point in the show. I only moved a couple times. Some people mm -hmm. never move. I wanted to move as much as I could because I wanted to meet as many people as I could. So, like, I didn't know the dude next to me. He was kind of, like, low-key tweaking a little bit. I was like, man, you got to be cool. Like, you need to stop acting like Oh, you like were probably loser. perfect. Like, you've been in front of the camera yeah, before. Yeah, so I was, like, You're ready for You're used to crowds. Like, ready yeah. for it. But, like, the moment, the only person I was really worried about seeing was Zion Williamson. And he was, like, three or four seats down from me. Mm -hmm. And it was just, like, one of those, like, <sighs> like You're a big fan of his? Love Zion. So, I was like, got to keep my cool. Got to keep it, like, chill. Out of and, all of the famous athletes there. Zion was the Zion one. Zion is the one that's making you nervous. Yep. I would have been nervous by pretty much everybody Literally in that room. <laughs> it was, Russell Wilson, Rob Gronkowski, yes. the, Dwight Howard. <laughs> I'd have been shitting myself. Like, oh. The one that like 
when I I knew I didn't know what I was getting into. Like Isaiah was like, you will. He was like, have you met anybody famous here in L.A.? And I was like, no, I haven't. I only met one famous person in L.A. I ran into Lonzo Ball crossing the street. Hey, um, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I actually, and it was weird because I ran into him a week after I saw him at the ESPYS. Um, but he was like, you're gonna meet every famous person you've ever wanted to meet in your entire life. Are you are you ready for that? And I was like, no, like that, whatever. So we're sitting there, and Caitlyn Jenner walks in, and oh boy. has a bet, and like I was like whoa like oh my god like i've seen you on tv <laughs> yeah. and i had i had a better seat than she did and then it was like all these people just like paul pierce like walks in sitting like two seats down from me and mm -hmm. i'm just like what what is going on and then i start moving and i'm starting to be like oh my god like i could like pull Dwight Howard's hair if I wanted to right now. Like, I could totally do it. <laughs> so, like, when I knew, like, the supervisors were there, I took videos of me pretending to pull his <laughs> hair. It was so unreal. But, like, Giannis was definitely the cool one because, like... Ah, that's incredible. Afterwards. Oh, I'll show them to you. It was unreal. It was so much fun. And you just went by yourself? So, I went with Isaiah and his wife. So, they said that we've got three seat filler tickets, so okay. we're going to go. And so, they were like kind of like they were so nice about it but they were like how the hell did you get such a good seat like the first time they like are seat fillers all the time because i know people who like runs the like run the events or whatever and they do these for all shows like most people can do them if you find out about it like it's yeah. an easy way to like get to go to the grammys for free you just like have to move a lot mm -hmm. which i'm like oh my god yes i'm gonna go to the freaking espies for free makes for so a great story he and his wife ended up like meeting up were able to like enough people leave like usually by like halfway through the show like people are like going to the after parties already they're not staying the whole time so when jared goff left it was about halfway through the show so i was sitting front row at the espies for an hour and a half um and they ended up meeting up and they were like third or fourth row but i was like right there prime spot like Every time the camera flashed to the crowd, it was it was me there, which was just like the weirdest, coolest experience mm -hmm. of my life. Like it doesn't feel real sometimes for me to be like Rob's on TV and I'm like, huh, like I sat next to you. God, that had to have been like a that dream come so true, wild. especially because you said that you've had you've been passionate about sports and you said you you've known what you've wanted to do since you were you said fourth grade mm -hmm. and was... that had like the ESPYs that doesn't get any better than that. It so, was so that's I mean, incredible, unreal. I think every time I see Isaiah, I'm like, thank you so much for bringing me. Like it yeah. was so cool because like I moved out to LA, like didn't know anybody, like, mm -hmm. and he basically like, I I was staying with my dad's friends who were the best people on the planet. They were so nice to me, and then I moved by myself so I could be a little closer to work because LA like commute is just unreal. Sure. And he was he was like family to me out there. He was checking up on me when the earthquakes were happening. Yep. Brought me to the ESPYS. Would take me out to lunch and stuff like that. And it was just like. The best human on the planet is Isaiah Scales. Like, yeah, that's so cool that you have that connection now. It's unreal. And it was, uh, yeah. I, Iowa people really take care of each other. Oh yeah, that's they true. Do. Dan said that she was going to be on ESPN someday. I'm starting to believe him. Yeah, <laughs> he tells everyone that. He's like, oh yeah, she, she he's she's going he, places. Well, first he said he first he said like. <laughs> She's the next Laura Vandenberg. And he goes, no, she's going beyond Laura Vandenberg, okay? <laughs> Laura Vandenberg, she's doing, like, local Iowa stuff, okay? Lucy, she's going She's going next level, <laughs> all right, bro? Good, the problem with this is literally Dan said that exact thing <laughs> word for word four days ago. <laughs> We were at, we were, at, I, he was like, hey, like, I'm, my family's the here at, like, pony. Liner. Yep, that's Dan Mead. He was like, my brother's <laughs> at Liner, like, come meet him and stuff. The first thing he says is literally that. And I'm See, like, stop. Hi, I'm Dan Mead. Yeah, I'm really good friends with Lucy Rodine. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, you need to, like, calm down a little, like, chill out. Because, like, if I don't make it to ESPN, I'm okay with that. I don't know what it's going to do to Dan, though. Oh, man, his ego is already inflated as is. He's going to... We're worried man. about Dan Mead. Oh, my God. But, yeah, <laughs> literally, that's... I heard that exact spiel four days ago. That's awesome. Word for word. Uh, Laura Vandenberg and everything. Well, who is a lovely person, by the way. When you get famous someday on ESPN, give me a shout-out. Oh, yeah. I totally will. <laughs> still be here. You guys, this is my first podcast I've ever done, so yeah. you always have taken my podcast virginity. Yeah, like, awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, God, Dan. <laughs> oh, my God. I love him. He's so funny. He is the most supportive person on the planet. He, like, 
as ridiculous as he is, is introducing me to everyone. It's like, she's going to be on ESPN. Mm -hmm. He has like kept up with my career and like watches all my stuff and just shares it. And he loves me so much. I love him back. What a great human. He is a good but dude. But a little too much sometimes. Yep. He he uh, he just branched military police. So yeah, that's I where saw he's... that. That's where he wanted. Yep, that's where I he's so headed. I'm so excited for him. Mm -hmm. So excited. He's going to do great things too. He will. Yeah, he's he's one of the good ones for sure. He needs to talk about himself more. <laughs> he needs to talk about himself more because he's going to do wonderful things. He is, for oh, sure. Dan, what a human. So I actually I ran into a fr uh, friend of mine who was also in ROTC today, and I told him that I was uh, recording with you because he's in DITV right now, and he has been since he's a freshman. John Genoa. Yep, that's the I one. I love John Chenoweth. No way. That okay. kid is the best. I can't believe you know who he is. because so. And I sat down with him. I ran into him at the Capitol Mall. I was not planning on seeing him. And uh, I was there. I was like, oh, yeah, dude. Like I'm I'm recording tonight with uh, with Lucy Rodine. I don't know if you know her. She's like, and he goes, dude, she was like my boss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was in charge of me at one point. And he, <laughs> and, I love John. And he was like, she, I don't know. I, you, ask her if she remembers me. She might not. So, <laughs> Oh, my God. John, I hope you're listening to this. Of course I remember you. He's a great he guy as well. He was the best. Crazy hard worker. Super talented. Yep. Oh, I love John. He's such a nice guy. We love watching him on uh, DITV and... Uh, he, he at one point he was doing weather. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Is he doing news yeah, now? Yeah, so he's like he's the Friday anchor. So okay. he's on usually every Friday morning. Does cool. a great job. Yeah, every once in a while I'll like pull some clips from him and throw them in our little group chat and <laughs> just to embarrass him. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm one of his references. I might be. He's wow, yeah. John. You're getting a great reference. Yeah. If you listen to me for anything. <laughs> I love that kid. He is awesome. Yeah, good guy. There's a lot of I. Do you know Cole Kraus? Yep. Yeah. yeah so oh he does my it gosh. Too. Oh, goodness. Cole, Jesus. Yeah, he started this year, too. So. Oh, we know. We we know Cole very oh, well. <laughs> what does that mean? Cole is a very good friend of ours. I love him to death. He's just, uh, we like to pick on him. So <laughs> It's probably easy to do that. Uh -huh. He's a great kid, though. Good kid, good kid. Yeah, lots of DITV TVers. They're all mm -hmm. doing good stuff. But yeah, I love John. It sounds like so much fun. I, I like, should do it, dude. I almost yeah. wish I could like get it. I don't know. Maybe it's too it's just, late. You don't have to like switch your major. Just try it out. Just yeah, you can do it. You can just sign up. You just don't show have to up and be like, hook up now. She like, be like, hey guys, um, I'm uh, Davis. Kind of want to be on your show. So <laughs> they will I... be like, okay, cool. Like we don't care. No, I don't know. Do I'm it. a little rough around the edges. I don't know if I could do like a scripted performance. I'm more of a go with the flow, do my own thing, sort of like you said with your <laughs> with your show. If you watch, this is what I love to do right here. Well, so. you're great at this. If you watch like my stuff from when I first started, from when I was a freshman, it is on. Like I would roll my eyes on camera, no. like all the time, and I would talk like this. I'd be like, "Hi, it's Lucy." Like the Iowa women's tennis team took mm. on another women's tennis team this weekend, and it was like that stuff all the time. So you get yeah, better. Yeah, reporter boy. Oh no, for sure. I, Very I think, bad. I so when when Skyler and I were sort of in the planning phase for this podcast, I kind of said like, you know, I'm not that worried about how the first few episodes go because there's a YouTuber by the name of Nick Bear and I've told you about this guy. Not and the Iowa basketball player? Not, no. <laughs> and it's funny because I was like watching one guy. of your videos and you were talking about that Nick Bear and I was like, wait, <laughs> I'm, I'm familiar with another Nick Bear. No, different guy, spells his name different. He's actually, he at the time he got he got famous because he was an infantry officer. Okay. That had gone through ROTC. So a lot of guys that are in ROTC there, he's, you know, big fan because he gives like videos about what he does in the infantry world as an officer. He got out and now he's doing, uh, uh, he's runs his own supplement company. He's a nutrition major. So that's what he's doing now. Big fitness junkie. The guy's colossal <laughs> ripped. All right. But anyway, I remember watching one of his videos where he talked about like, some tips about uh, YouTubing and just being in media in general. Um, and this advice kind of applies to more than just that. But he said, you should look at the stuff that you produced like a year ago and cringe at it. And yes, because if you're doing that, that means that you're growing and you're getting better. And so that's why I kind of told Skylar, I was like, dude, let's just start recording. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I'm sure next year when we look at this, we'll be like, 
God, we sucked at this. <laughs> Audio quality still yeah. makes me mad. <laughs> <laughs> I think y'all are doing fantastic. But yeah, that's the that's I've gotten that advice too. It's unreal. I love to look back at my stuff and be like, mm-hmm. I fucking sucked. Yes. It's <laughs> it's been such a cool process seeing uh how something that was literally just a spur of the moment idea has turned into this. And this the, the people that I've that have taken Skylar and and James, my artist, right? I say my artist like he belongs to me. <laughs> you own no. our buddy James. He, he does artwork for us. It's been very cool to see them put my ideas into action in ways that I never could. And so that's been really rewarding for them and for myself. So, I mean, he's got, you should see his setup at his apartment in his room. He's got like the dual monitors <laughs> with his laptop plugged in. There's like a memory what do you call that? Assistant external hard external, drive. Okay, <laughs> external hard drive, whatever. And there's all this stuff going on. He's like adjusting the frequencies. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking. You ever see that meme of, uh, what's his name? Young Thug, who's like clicking on the computer. And there's that other rapper just kind of like watching <laughs> him. And uh, yeah, that's literally how I feel when he shows me stuff. And like, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> Like, I, this setup <laughs> is unreal. Like, the journalism school at Iowa has this, like, podcast studio, which is, like, basically just, like, a closet. You're so much nicer. We, we really? Tried, we tried yeah. to get some nice stuff. And we've made it as nice as we can. Yeah, we've, we've, you know, done what we can with it. Um, you know. All right. What I'm really excited for is we're moving into a house off of Melrose okay. on Greenwood Drive. Okay. Um, and Skylar is taking the master bedroom because we're going to put the studio in there, and there's going to be so much more space, and we're really going to trick that it's baby. It's going to look sick. Stay so, tuned for that, people. That is but, awesome. I kind of, but I we'll like this. Be back again during that time. I like I will this. I graduated, so if Never I'm mind. ever back in Iowa City, I will let you know. <laughs> I like our setup here because it's kind of like humble origins, you know, literally just starting this out of my bedroom. Oh, I think that's and, awesome. Uh, that's the best way to do it, though. It's been, I mean, yep. we're going to be the next like Apple who started in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us now. <laughs> yeah, you're you're my Wozniak. I'll be your jobs. So. <laughs> but uh, the funny thing is that I so he actually is the one who went out and found these microphones and decided like, hey, this is what we should buy. So we kind of split the cost. And he has his own software that he uses, Logic Pro, it's called. And uh, he knows how to work that thing, the soundboard. (laughs) And uh, he rigged all this stuff up. But it's in my room. So literally for 95% of the time, this half of my bedroom is not useful to me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I kind of took over your computers. You really don't get yes, to use your monitors because there's like it's a pain in the butt to get back here. <laughs> yes, like that that PC is mine back there, and I used to use it a lot, and now I really don't because it's such a pain in the ass to get. Yeah, back Yeah, you'd there. have to climb them over at two tables to get there. Really, <laughs> and that's okay. I have a laptop, so that gets the job done. But uh, yeah, so next year when we get this new house, Skyler's gonna have all the stuff in his room. So. We don't have to do this uh, moving thing, so. I like it though. It gives it character. It does, yeah. Character Which is, for yeah. sure. That's really what we're going for. I mean, I <laughs> straight up character. That's all we care about. Yeah, but uh, like I said before, I'm 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 a I love telling stories. I love hearing other people's stories, and that's what I want. And uh, so that is awesome. That's what we're about here. Even our artwork, right? I I, I don't know if you've seen it. The I saw, I think, some of it. Right. If if you go and look up, um, it's like the thumbnail photo. Okay. I saw the thumbnail photo. That was cool. Of like the Mayan ruins and stuff. Yeah. So I basically, James is our friend. He's also an ROTC. I kind of, I know he's a great artist, right? He draws his own tattoos and shit. Oh, wow. And uh, so I kind of gave him this idea like, okay, once he, he said he would be interested in doing it, I gave him this really vague idea of what I wanted. I was like, okay, I kind of like this jungle theme, the Mayan ruins, but like somehow incorporate Iowa City into it. And I wasn't sure if I had given him enough to go off of, and he totally killed it. So this is true. that was awesome. This is true. We li- okay. <laughs> he draws on uh, with pencil and paper most of the time. Okay. And so that's he started out with this uh, black and white sketch, and I was amazed by just that. 
right? The black and white sketch. I was like, dude, that's so cool. He goes, it'll be even better when I color it. I'm like, okay. So Skylar took a graphic design class because he's an engineer. So he's a little. <laughs> it made that sound like that was correlated. Like he's an engineer. All engineers dude, take graphic. I'm not required classes. to take graphic design. No, I was required to take an art class, and that sounded like the coolest one. Okay. Okay. That's Whatever. Fair. Either way, so he took a graphic design class. So he's kind of familiar. He, you have this program, right, where you can put drawings and make them digital. I, that yeah. probably sounded so dumb. I, mean, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. You're not wrong. <laughs> so we took the black and white outline of the artwork and put it onto Skylar's uh, software, right? And he has this, what, iPad mini? Is that what it is? IPad Pro. Regular, regular <laughs> iPad, dude. It seems kind of smaller than a regular it iPad, though. literally bigger than a regular <laughs> iPad. Okay, maybe I'm just stupid. <laughs> anyway, he has this stylus and the program is on the iPad. So we have James come over and we're like, hey, dude, we got the the your outline onto this ipad in this program and so if you want to like color it we can do it from here skylar actually messed around with it a little bit and he started coloring it you know i can't do art except for me and him have the artwork skills of like a kindergartner so he started coloring it in and it looked okay but it looked like okay for a fifth grader right (laughs) so which i'm not like talking shit like my artwork skills are atrocious it's true so we hand it off to James, and it's a pretty complicated software with a lot of things you can edit with. So we kind of just handed it to him, and he's like me. He doesn't know dick about tech either. <laughs> so we're like, all right, here's like kind of how it works. Just go to town. And he was like, okay. So he literally sat on that bed, and uh, we just kind of left him alone for like a an hour or yeah, two. We, we recorded an episode while he was... Oh, yeah. Our first episode, right, yeah. with Tannis. Yep. We recorded it and just let him sit there on the bed and color. And by the time he was done, he showed it to me. And I was like, oh, holy shit. How did he figured out how to do things on that program that you and I didn't even know how to do? He just drew. He just draw. Yeah, yeah. He just sat there and just started messing with it. And I was like, oh my God, that looks awesome. So that's, oh. yeah, you know, an example of like how I'm amazed I am that someone was able to take my vague idea. That and is just, so cool. And just make it reality. I mean, that is like, that is, it's like so like American dream esque. Like, <laughs> yes. I don't know how else to describe yeah. it without like sounding like super lame, uh-huh. but like so American dream. Like, you just thought of this and like, here we are. Like, it's badass. It is. Yeah. It's very cool. And like, it's made me really. So, if I have advice to give anybody who wants to start their own thing, start their own brand, whatever your project is, whatever your passion is, get other people involved and pitch, like be persuasive and get them involved because you cannot do it all yourself. Oh yeah. And there are people out there that can do things that you cannot. And that's why like get them involved, you know, no, agree so, with that wholeheartedly. You that's- gotta, you gotta outsource the things that you're not good at. <laughs> and, um, Everything that's going on with the tech side of this, I am not good at. So, <laughs> and that's why you're here. Yeah, I can't talk, so that's why he's here. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. He just likes to act like he's oh, anti-social. Dude. He's pretty social I'm for not, an engineer. I, I talk, but I'm not. Like, I feel like you're doing. You have a podcast voice. I've had people actually tell me you've had a podcast voice. Yeah, they're. I don't shouldn't. have a podcast. You do voice. have a podcast voice. I'll give like you. Like, you have he's a good podcast at it. voice. Like I can talk, sure, but it's I don't not know. like I'm all right, but. I when I envisioned this podcast, I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted it to be about a little. I mean, like obviously you'd get to know me a little bit, but I wanted it, it's guest focused, right? No, People I ask like me that. like, "What's it about? What do you guys talk about?" And I'm like, "It just depends on who I have on." And they're like, "What?" So, <laughs> like, it's the dumbest thing ever. tonight. <laughs> tonight we're talking about Lucy. So. I really I like that a lot. So I I get asked on podcasts a lot, um, like pretty frequently, and most of the time I say yes and then just forget about it but why i like wanted to come on your podcast is because everyone wants to have me on their podcast to talk about iowa uh-huh. like i know a lot about iowa i can talk about iowa sports forever but i like being able to talk about non-iowa things and yeah. like like my like following they love my iowa content but a lot of them want to know about me and i i love that they want to know about me i think that's such a cool way to do mm-hmm. it and like 
why not do it like by having fun hanging out with like two really cool humans that I met an hour ago? <laughs> yeah. I mean, your story about the SBs and all that stuff, like to me, that is far more interesting than talking about Iowa sports. Because I follow Iowa sports to a degree, but I'm, you know, I'm not super passionate. I, I couldn't tell you all the players' names yeah. and, you know, what about so. Yeah. My my like whole theory on that is like I don't think a Starbucks barista wants to go home and drink coffee. I don't want to go yeah, and you talk don't about go Iowa sports. A podcast on my, yeah, you like, probably get sick time. of it. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to talk about sports. I just don't. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what? Why not? And I'm like, oh my god, we have to, we have to like slow it down here. Mm-hmm. There's only well, that's so much. That's what everyone talks about all the time. Their free time, and then yeah. for you, it's like that's your work. That's so my it's work. Different. So yeah. I try to find things that aren't sport related to talk about and to focus wow. on. Well, you're known for your sports coverage, but I mean, there's also a lot more to you. Yes. And that's what Thank I'd you. like to get out. So, I mean, like you said, you like storytelling and you want to be involved in comedy. Mm-hmm. So I think that's awesome. Hope so. I love, I love putting comedy in places it's not supposed to be. So <laughs> that's great. It's really funny then. Uh huh. I like, uh, I think we were talking about this already with Bleacher Report and with, uh, bar stool, um, but I don't. You're probably familiar with Barry McCockner. Yes. Oh, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> He's so great. <laughs> I love how he gets like banned and he comes back with a new Two account. Different name. <laughs> He's Dying. like, you can't kill me. <laughs> and every once in a while, he'll uh, he'll change his profile picture and his header and his name, and it'll be like Ian Rappaport, <laughs> and he'll tweet yes, as if he's I Ian Rappaport. And there was, I think, I know you know what I'm talking yes. about. I can't remember specifically what happened, but he impersonated somebody. I sent it to my brother because I was like, oh my God, right. like this is real. And J- my brother Jack was like, nah, Luce, like you're you're real off here. Yeah, he impersonated some, I cannot remember who it was. He impersonated somebody who was pretty big in the sports world. And he tweeted something just hilarious and obscene. Yes. And people thought it was really was that. recent? Like, uh, it, months ago it was yeah. a couple months ago yeah. i cannot remember who it was for the life of me but i remember it was like it was like a, a storyline but it was uh-huh. like a ridiculous storyline yeah there was headlines mm-hmm. about this sports uh reporter that had m- sent this tweet out but it was really barry mccockner <laughs> <laughs> impersonating him but they didn't know that because i like sent it to my brother and i was like this this is like real? Like, yeah. My brother was like, nah, Lou, it was oh, like, you're so off I just on think this. That's I thought so it was so funny. funny. I wish I could find what it was. I cannot remember who it was for the life of me. Yeah, dude, look up like Barry McCockner impersonation. Uh, like Mick, like MC, I think it's M C C O C K I N E R. It's like Barry McCock in her. That's the joke. Maybe it's Skip Bayless. Oh, it could have been Skip Bayless. I don't know. Whoever it was, it was somebody that was. Somewhat well known, but I think that's I eat that shit up. Like, oh, it's so. I funny. think it makes sports so much more fun. Sports needs to be funny. People take it way too seriously. They really do. Oh, a fake Woj account. Yeah, it, it, I think it was. Was it Skip Bayless? Oh, I don't know. We can look it up later, but uh, yeah, I I I wish you the best in that endeavor. <laughs> so in the Thanks. sports comedy world. <laughs> okay, wait. Was, was yes, really- this was it. I remember this. Oh, yeah, it was about Chris Paul. It was about man boobs, because I remember. (laughs) That's right. I said this to my, I remember every single thing about this tweet. I was sitting at my office, and I saw this pop up, and I was like, oh, my God, like, this can't be real. And then, like, so many people were retweeting it, and so much was going on. I, like, sent it to my brother, and I was like, really? (laughs) And, like, Jack was like, no. (laughs) So, so for our listeners that can't see this, right? Barry McCockner tweets, Sources tell ESPN that Chris Paul repeatedly <laughs> made fun of James Harden for having man boobs during practices over the last two seasons. Several times, Harden broke down into tears and had to leave the practice facility. <laughs> no surprise to see Harden wanting Paul out. Now, Barry, Sports Talk Barry tweeted that and Skip Bayless thought it was real yep. <laughs> and he talked about it on the air and oh my god, like that is peak trolling. So funny. That is peak level trolling and they banned his account <laughs> and he came back. Now his now his name is like sexy troop lover. He always yeah. talks about how he loves yep. the troops 
Oh man, it was so funny. We have this friend, uh, you know, Andrew to Yeah, He's one of the ones that yep. uh, uses our podcast equipment. Yep. He like, since a lot of us are in ROTC and he's friends with all of us and we're in the army and like every veterans day, he'll like send a Barry McCockner tweet to us. That's like, <laughs> I'm so goddamn horny for the troops. <laughs> <laughs> it was so true. <laughs> what was, uh, yeah, I remember who sent one this year. Didn't you? Yeah, he, yeah, I can't remember which one he sent. But, God, yeah. Love sports so humor. So funny. So I support you. Thank you. Fully. Yes. We need more sports humor. Yeah, I guess I just like, I kind of get bored of the very serious sports talk. Um, There's too many people doing it. That's why. Sports is not... Sports are sports, like it's supposed to be fun. Everyone right? has Literally, an opinion. Like, That's the problem. This because like everyone has an opinion on their sports, so then everyone argues about it. But when you like, if you can be make comedic jokes about it, then it's you, funny. that's like the a great way to stand out. Yeah. So I'm trying to do my whole theory on it is like every time I felt like I was gonna die after a Duke basketball loss or an Iowa football uh-huh. loss, I never did. So like, why can we not have fun yeah. with it? Like uh-huh. sports, like. People literally, like, Iowa will lose, and it's the end of the world. It is. It's burn Iowa City to the ground. Your life is going to be exactly the same in three days. Like, Well, that's I think that's because for Iowans, the Hawkeyes, Hawkeye football is the pinnacle of sports, right? There's no pro professional sports here. It's just the Hawkeyes and the Cyclones. That's that's why I'm thankful I came to Iowa. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I I was looking at a lot of different schools. I mean, I moved... 15 hours away from home to do this. Yeah. Um, Iowa fans are without a doubt the best in the world. And I know that everyone says that, but I, I travel from mm-hmm. Big Ten school to Big Ten school. Classic the, Midwesterners, yeah. you know. They love their team so much. Like, it's like one of those things where, like, every school says it, but, like, I've seen West Coast schools. They don't care. East Coast schools, they don't care. And even if you go to a school like Michigan – the amount of Iowa fans that were in Ann Arbor was unreal. Yeah. Like, and it's like that every game. And it's never like that in Kinnick. It's never like a yep. crazy huge fan base for the other school. And that's why I came to Iowa because even though I was like, yeah, like, it does, like, Iowa's journalism school is good, but it doesn't have like the level of like authority other journalism mm-hmm. schools do. It was, Iowa's fan base is ex- 100% the reason that I'm on this podcast with you right now is because yeah. they they love Iowa so much that they love me so much because they support my work because it's like about Iowa and it's it's unreal to have a group of people that passionate about a 21 year old college student's work like mm-hmm. they just love Iowa so much yeah and I love it is very so much. cool I mean you can even 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 as good as Minnesota has been how they still struggle to fill TCF Bank Stadium mm-hmm or maybe because of the weather a little bit. But it's also just, you know, Minnesota's just not as passionate about football as Iowa is. I mean, I would say that comparable to Iowa would be like Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, Camp Randall is a pretty cool place. But, I really uh, liked Camp Randall. But no matter where I go, I've seen almost every stadium in the Big Ten. I haven't seen Ohio State's or Penn State's. Or like I was going to ask about Penn State. Yeah, Maryland and Rutgers are the other two, but I don't really count them. Um, <laughs> Penn, State's the, Penn State and Ohio State are the two ones I've really wanted to see, but I haven't. Like, every time, like, even though, like, a lot of the other stadiums are nicer, I don't think any, like, stadium's atmosphere compares to Kinnick mm. in the slightest. Like, yeah. in the slightest, just because their fans are so ridiculous yep. in the best way. Agreed. The only the only team, the only college team that I follow besides Iowa and a little bit Minnesota uh, would be Clemson. Okay. And I'm actually not a bandwagon Clemson fan. Uh, a little bit, maybe. Okay. My mom ran track there. Okay. So I have a little got, bit of connection to them. I also have, through uh, Army ROTC, I've met a couple of people that go to Clemson. Okay. So I kind of have, like, some friendships there. and Yeah, I met, so, like, one person that went to Georgia, and I'm like, woo, Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> now you're over here saying, go dogs. Yeah. So Dan really. Mead would love it. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't name one person on their team. So. Right, yeah. I'm big on the Clemson Tigers. Love them. I think Death Valley is super cool. Never been. I've always wanted to. My dad's best friend wrestled mm-hmm. at Clemson. Um, so, like, he used to go down for games. Um, and they're not that far from me, but I've never been. Yeah. It's just, like, growing up in ACC country, nobody gives a shit. Literally really? nobody gives a shit. I'm not going to drive to Clemson. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, I won't even drive to Wake Forest. That's 15 minutes. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <doing it. laughs> 
Yeah, the only thing that I would say with Clemson is I feel like their games are probably most of their games are not very exciting because they're going to mop the floor yeah. with most of the teams they play. So it really isn't going to get exciting until the playoffs. Yeah. So the ACC is like the legitimate. I mean, just such a bad conference right, right. now. I mean, so terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, they only have this is like the first time since the college football playoff has been out that there's been one conference that's had less than two ranked teams. That's the ACC. The only yeah. ranked team they have is Clemson. Wow. So it is such like a bad conference. So like no one cares about football Yeah, which is there. super unfortunate because the Clemson-Alabama game when Deshaun Watson was a senior, okay, that was like a soup, that national championship mm-hmm. game that was super high scoring. Deshaun I Watson had one. like five or six touchdowns. That was probably the best – Probably the best football game I've ever watched. It was so much fun. Very, very exciting. I don't know. I can't remember what year it was. Maybe 2016 or 17. Yeah. It was what? That was Alabama one. Was that the one Alabama one? Clemson, Clemson won that, that one. That was two years ago then? Two, yeah. Two, three years ago? But that was great football. But I imagine most of Clemson's games are not like that. No. they. So it's just kind of unfortunate. They blow everybody out, mm-hmm. but... They've had like some, I mean, like they almost lost to UNC this year, which is mm-hmm. disgusting. Um, but I'm I kind of, that. I'm iffy about Clemson. I don't yeah. know how I feel about you don't think them. They're the same this year. I mean, it, if you're not playing anybody, yeah, like, how, no, are you, how are you, how are you getting better? It's hard to just like, step up and like, because I don't know what to expect. Because I'm like, you almost lost to UNC, and not that UNC is like bad, but they're not very good. Mm-hmm. Like, I have no idea what to expect from them. I'm just excited that things are a little different in the SEC this year. I love that LSU is good. Yeah, I love. I that am LSU a huge good. fan of their new coach. Ed Orgeron. That guy is great. His voice. Oh. He is ridiculous. He's I like the him. Alex Jones of college football. It just reminds <laughs> me of him. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I like Northwestern's coach, his football coach. I Their don't football. like him at all. I've never. I don't actually know anything about him. I just remember seeing him at Kinnick when it was like. 30 some degrees and this man looks like he's on steroids in a short sleeve shirt just <laughs> going crazy and everyone's just like dude this guy is high off something right now he's like super re- northwestern is an unbelievably bad football team this year like they are uh, they're horrible they're straight up terrible i don't like him because i went to big 10 media days two years ago and i was trying to ask him a question um and some some dude kept cutting me off whatever it happens all the time uh, and he looks at me and he goes i'll get to you missy and i was like Missy, like, oh, dang! Like you're some like middle schooler. I was like, <laughs> wow, that's like did, you didn't call this dude buddy, like, and I was really it pissed me off so much. But I was like, this is not the time. Like, let's not pick a fight with the Northwestern football coach. Like, <laughs> let's just be chill. And ever Chicago since then, for you. I've hated him because I was like, sense. yeah, if you ever call me Missy again, like I'm gonna lose well, my shit. The dude. Yeah, native Chicago folk. I'm not a fan of them. I can be mean. I used to work at, uh, so my uncle owns a bar called Eric the Red. It's across the street from US Bank Stadium. Okay. It's the closest bar to the stadium. And I bar backed for him a little bit when I was in high school. What? What was the name? Eric the Red. That's not the same bar. No, he owns multiple. Oh. So he he went to a 1975 (laughs) concert in Minneapolis. Okay. And he ended up at some bar and he was like, dude, like the openers are here for the band or for uh, yeah. the concert. And I was like, oh, dude, you know what? This is in Minneapolis. I was like, what, do you know what, uh, band, what, uh, what's the name of the bar you're at? And he goes, some place called Dan Kelly's. I'm like, no shit, dude. That's my uncle's bar. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work there. We totally just chose somewhere. Right yeah. Now. But uh, no, Eric the Red is on the other side of the city, across the street from US Bank Stadium. So I worked there a lot for Vikings game days as a bar back. You know, very intense work, and it was hard, but it was very profitable, um, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. But my favorite fans are probably Green Bay. Okay. They're fun. Um, Dallas was good. They were a good time. I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm happy really? to hear it. Yes. Yeah, I liked them. They were wild, but they tipped a lot, so I made yeah, a lot that, of money that day. That sounds I was like actually probably – so when Dallas was in town – I worked a six hour shift, four to 10. And I showed up at four, and my partner, who was supposed to be barbacking with me, was a no show. 
my manager was taking out the trash. Oh my god! And was like had this look on her face, like she was about to kill somebody, because this place was packed wall to wall. So I showed up and got to work immediately, and for like four hours straight, I did not stop moving. I was just carrying beer, restocking the fridge. I would I would stock the fridge full of beer, Bud Light, Mick Golden Light, Budweiser, Miller Light. And by the time I would go downstairs and come back up, it would all be off the shelf, right? And it was just liquor bottles and taking the trash out and dishes and whatever, okay? It was a madhouse. But after the game started at 7, 8 o'clock rolled around, I finally got to rest. And my manager was just like, okay, you go sit over there, (laughs) get yourself some food, and you're good for the rest of the night. And I finally got my tips, $600. Ooh. For a f- basically four hours worth of work. <laughs> what a night! Wow. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, but this is quite the tangent. Okay, uh, this is where I was going with this. <laughs> Chicago <laughs> least favorite fans. <laughs> Chicago is <sighs> they're assholes. Not all of you, <laughs> but I had some bad experiences with Not some Chicago fans, and uh, I'm pretty tight with the security guards. Okay. As I, I was working there in high school, so I was pretty. You know, I was. I'm still not a very big person, pretty average size. Um, and this is a downtown bar, right, with drunk football fans. So I made sure to make friends with the security guards who That's are, smart. like, huge, and some of them know martial arts. <laughs> so I would go and bring them, like, a Cokes and stuff and whatever, well, you know, because their job is kind of boring. They just yeah. stand at the door and card people all day and deal with drunk assholes. So I would go make friends with all of the uh, security guards and... um they got me out of a jam once with a drunken Chicago fan. So <sighs> always make friends with the uh, the bigger guys if you're gonna work in I know. In in that line of work. Fine, friends with Kemp. <laughs> Caleb and James. <laughs> yeah. Why Kemp and me love each other and hate on Taylor. Our our artist James that I just gave okay. that long spiel about, he's like what, two ten, two fifteen, and he's jacked. Yeah, he's huge. Yeah. So gosh, yeah, no. I worked in the service industry too. The freaking nightmare stories you get from that stuff. Oh yeah. Unreal. I'll never forget the time I I served at a restaurant. Um and this dude was trying to get my attention. I think I think it's so rude that if you need a refill if you shake your cup at me. I think that's rude. Oh yeah. Do you know what I think is worse? Is if you kick me in the back of the leg to get my attention. Oh, Jesus this Christ. man kicked me. To shake his glass at me. He kicks you and then you turn around and he shakes you. Yeah. Glass. Hey. So I was like. Bartender. I was like clearing this table. Refill for like, this shit. For, That's a great way to. Yeah. Get. I was like. Re- I was clearing this table. Like my, my table had just left. And this man. And so I was saying. Excuse me. Or hi ma'am. Or anything. Just kicks me in the back of the leg. I like turn around to see that he's kicked me. And he just. Shakes. Jesus Christ. And I was like. And like what I can't be like fuck you. So I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, let me go get you another one. Yeah, smiling through your teeth. <laughs> it was like a seventy dollar meal. He I try not to remember my tips, but this man tipped me two dollars on it. Oh geez. after he kicked me in the back of the leg and was horrible. Yeah, that's the restaurant business for you. The best of people and the worst of people. That is true. That is really true. I had this one guy who it was I like worked there like before I moved to Iowa and it was right before I moved to Iowa. Like I tried to remember the good stories and I was like telling him he was like a regular. But I was like, yeah, I'm actually driving up to Iowa in two days, like moving back for school. And he just pulls fifty dollars out of his wallet and he says, this will get you halfway to Iowa. And I was like, are you serious? And he was like, yep. Or like I had a wow. a table <laughs> I had a table with Duke fans that had like a seventy dollar meal and they tipped me a hundred dollars because they oh. said because I told them a story of how I hated Carolina. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Yeah, so it's paying off people. in more ways than one. <laughs> That's cool. We hate UNC. It just keeps getting better. Yeah, service industry sucks. So I guess my last question for you is: after you graduate, what's the plan? Are you playing? Are you staying here, or, or are you gonna move? Such a great question. Um one that I've asked a lot uh I don't know yet so the problem with the like the journalism field is if you're hired for a job they want you to start working immediately if a tv station has an opening they want you right then so I will not even start applying for jobs until March um and so my theory on this is like I have literally no idea where I'm gonna be in a year and I'm gonna kind of keep it that way 
I don't want to close myself off to for sure to like not living somewhere. I loved living in California. I would be so happy to move back to LA. It's really expensive. Sure, that's yeah. that's an obstacle. And I I like don't love the weather in Iowa, but like the fan base and the following the I've people, grown here sure. has made me want to stay in Iowa too. And I also love North Carolina. I love back home. So I have no idea where I'm going to be or even what exactly I'll be doing. I'm just going to kind of go with the flow of it and mm-hmm. see where I end up. Yeah. Which my dad loves that. Hey, That's I have the same point. mentality. I mean, when I when I graduate next year, I go wherever the Army sends me. So I can kind of request where I want to go, but at the end of the day, it's like, uh, no, you're going to go here. So No one has ever planned uh, this stuff out and it no. has worked. So like, yeah. why waste my time? Exactly. Like, I'm just going to enjoy being here. And then I'll go where I go and I'll do what I do. And if I don't like it, I'll leave. Yeah. And you never know, you know, an opportunity might come up and that is just, you can't refuse. Exactly. So we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully I'm still telling jokes about sports though. That's what I would hope to be doing. (laughs) Fingers crossed. There you go. Make Dan Mead proud. Dan. (laughs) Gotta do it for Dan. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Well, it's we've been recording for a hot minute. Hour and forty five. This is a this little is longer fun. than we Yeah. This is a little longer than we normally go, but this is good. This, this is great. Is, I had a great time. This is I don't so want to cut you off. So Yeah. I suppose we'll wrap up. Thanks uh, so much for being on. Yeah, it's been fun. On. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is awesome. I loved it. Great first podcast experience. Oh yeah. <laughs> And that's a wrap for episode eight. I hope you enjoyed listening to Lucy as much as I did. You can find her Twitter handle in the description. I highly recommend checking her out along with her show, Big Ten Blitz. You can also find the link to her website, lucyrodine.com, to learn a little bit more about her. As always, thanks so much for listening, and have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. (laughs) 